all of our guests and all of our visitors. Thank you so very much. We want to read from the King James translation today. And so I've asked Brother Jermaine if he would put our text on the monitors so that we can read it together from the King James translation. Amen. Will you please stand? May we read together. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. God bless you. You may be seated. Verse 16, please. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. He made the stars also. I want to talk with this thought in mind today, the God of the extra, the God of the extra. He made the stars also. I think it's meaningful more than coincidental and as we celebrate our 88th anniversary, we embark upon the work of the steeple to dismantle and take down the steeple which is presently in disrepair and to replace the front parapet wall and to rebuild the steeple. I know that some have had the question because you have asked it of me. Why should we spend $800,000 on a steeple? You have argued, and there is much to your argument, that there are so much more could be done with such money. We have so many other things that need to be done, like erecting a multi-purpose facility, a multi-purpose facility that will house classrooms. There is not a classroom in Calvary Church by design. We make spaces work for us, but we need a multi-purpose facility for classrooms where we can have true teaching and Christian education. It's hard to learn when folk are walking by while you're in Sunday school and one teacher is trying to talk louder than the next. We make do with what we have, but amen. We need a multi-purpose facility with a catering hall and athletic and recreational facilities for the youth and the theater and on and on. Why spend so much money on a mere steeple, you may ask, when we need to renovate this sanctuary? Somebody say amen. 
Amen. Uh, so much that needs to be done, the renovation and expansion of our bathrooms and our kitchen, and to finally get that elevator you have long been waiting for. Somebody ought to say amen. So if we got to do all of that, why spend the money on a steeple? After all, what will the steeple change once it's up? We're going to still preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that there is no other name under heaven with or without steeple, whereby we might be saved except the name of Jesus. We're going to preach the same. We're going to teach the same. We're going to sing and worship the same. He came from hell and earth to show. And we're going to do that whether it's a steeple or not. Somebody say amen. Yeah. We're going to worship. We're going to love each other and care for each other. We're going to pray whether we got a steeple or not. So what's the bigger do about the steeple? Why should we build a steeple? Really, will it really change? And after all, what does a steeple do? A steeple just stands there. So why so much ado about a steeple? Yeah. But the danger is, the danger is that we will accentuate the utilitarian, the what is useful, what is practical, and forget about the aesthetic and the symbolic and the transcendent. Oh, it's not a pew that you can sit on. It's not a piano you can play. No, but it has a total different purpose. God made the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night, but he threw in the stars also. He did something extra. Oh, I can think about it in my mind, Jorman. I think God was there in the mornings of creation and he had a ball of fire and light in his hand and he took a little of it and flung it into the uh, uh, atmosphere and there it was the sun blaming in all of its glory, blazing in all of its glory. And then he took some and flung it the other way and there was the moon. There it was to rule by night. So if you had a sun to rule by day and the moon to rule by night. For what do you need the stars? Well, I think God had a little light and a little fire left over in his hand. And so he just decided to fling it. Lord, have mercy into the stratosphere. And stars appeared all over the firmament. He made the sun to rule by day and the moon by night. And he made the stars also. He didn't have to make the stars, Lord. He wanted to make the stars. You need the sun in the day and you need the moon by night but he put the stars up there like diamonds flung against a velvet tile so that you might see what a wonderful glorious God he really is. Lord have mercy. You know we New Yorkers we don't really know but some of y'all from down south or down in the islands you remember how beautiful the stars were at night. Sometimes in New York with all the fall and smog and whatever you can't see the stars but from where I come from Lord have mercy the stars at night are big and bright deep in the heart of Texas we were on vacation in Arizona some years ago I'll never forget I never saw stars like that it was as if you could just reach up and pluck a star out of the sky with your hand they were so brilliant and hung so low in the sky. He made the stars. He, he already had the sun to rule the day, the moon to rule the night, but he did something extra. Lord, have mercy. Somebody is wondering, somebody is wondering, they said to me, Rev, we don't really need a steeple. A steeple is extra. Well, I want to talk about the God of the extra. He made the stars also. A steeple is a uniquely Christian architectural structure. The Muslim mosques have their minarets. 
But Christian churches have steeples. I don't understand some of these newfangled churches that they build. They look like giant auditoriums or music halls for entertainment. Many of them built without a steeple. But I'm kind of old fashioned and I like old fashioned things and I like old fashioned churches. And I believe that a church ought to have a steeple. Well, I want to tell you three quick things, and we're going to be through. Uh, I, I think the culinary ministry has some uh, uh, repast, some stuff for you after service. We go down, and we're going to cut the anniversary cake and sing happy anniversary to Calvary, and you come by and get something to eat. We're going to fellowship and have a little food together. Number one, we have to rebuild the steeple because there is theology in stone. There is theology in stone. I say those who profess to be Christian because, uh, uh, amen, Jesus say everybody call me Lord, Lord, but uh, amen, they don't belong to me. You know, some folk get the survey and they say I'm a Christian because Mama was a grandpapa. I come up in a Christian family, but amen. I, I, I can't speak for mama or daddy or my family. You got to know God for yourself. God doesn't save families. He saves individuals who make up families. He doesn't save nations. He saves individuals who make up nations. You got to decide that you want God in your life for yourself. So, but for the first time in American history, the nuns outnumber those who profess faith in Christ. And the nuns are not the N U N S, the nuns are the N O N E S. When you get the survey, it says, what is your religious affiliation? Methodist, Catholic, Baptist, so on and so on. And then there's a box that says none. And for the first time in American history, 55% of Americans say they have none. No religious affiliation. We need steeples. To remind us that there is a God. We need steeples, Lord have mercy. To remind us that there is more to our lives than what we eat and what we drive and what we wear. We need steeples to tell us there's another reality. There is a bigger reality. Amen. We need something to make us look up because life is always making us look down. Down at our problems down at our situation but every now and then you need to look up and realize that there is a God who's bigger than the problems you're facing right now the steeple says look up there is theology in the steeple but there is also evangelism in the steeple towering over our houses Towering over our homes. Lord have mercy. Let me tell you something. The church is like no other institution. It ain't the nightclub. Though I know some of y'all are sleeping this morning because you were at the nightclub last night. You heard me tell you about the about the man that was training his parrot. He took him to the mall, say, parrot, this is mall. Parrot, this is mall. He took him to the nightclub and say, parrot, this is nightclub. Parrot said, nightclub. He took him to church the next day. He say, parrot, this is church. Parrot say nightclub. He say, no, parrot, this is church. Parrot say nightclub. He say, no, this is church. Parrot say same folk. <laughs> the 
The church is its own. It ain't your nightclub. It's not your school. It's not the shopping mall. It is the church of Jesus Christ. And the steeple stands not only to point our gaze towards heaven, but it stands to invite every passerby that this is the place where God does his business with his people. And it invites every man, every woman, every boy and girl. This is the church of Jesus Christ. And this is the place where you should be. This place. That's why we're rebuilding the steeples because somebody's going to see that steeple and say, I want to go by that church. Oh, I wish I had time today, but amen, I'm keeping you too long. Let me go thirdly and finally, amen. The, the steeple has theology, the steeple has evangelism, but thirdly and finally, the steeple has its own ministry. While it stands there stately and tall, it has its own ministry. A place of comfort. That's what it announces. This is sanctuary. This is haven. This is the closest to heaven on earth. This place. There was a young lady who experienced a very traumatic time in her life and because of that traumatic time she lost her way in life one day she walked out of her home without telling anyone and took off walking as far as her legs could take her Three days later, when the police found her, her clothes tattered and ragged, her feet bruised because she had no shoes on her feet. She didn't have any purse or any ID with her. And so the cops couldn't figure out who she was and where to take her. Try as she might, she couldn't piece it together. But finally, she told the policeman, I live near an old red brick building with a tall steeple. And the cops drove her around the city from church to church looking for that old red brick building with the tall steeple. Some of you know this story because the woman was a member of this church. And finally, by providence or coincidence, whichever, the cops turned the corner at Guy Brewer and Linden and began driving up Guy Brewer Boulevard. And she said, yes, that's it. That's the old red brick church. And that's the red brick church with the tall steeple. And now that I know where that church is, I can show you how to take me on home. I'm telling somebody here today, the T steeple is standing so that some wayfaring soul might find their way. I know you're saying this is extra. It costs too much money. But guess what? Our God is a God of the extra and he keeps on doing extra things. He is the God not just of grace, but he's the God of amazing grace. He's the God of extra grace. He's the God of exceedingly, abundantly, above everything you could ask or imagine. He's an extra kind of God. If you don't believe me, ask Hezekiah. Hezekiah asked him for a year, but he gave Hezekiah 15 extra years uh, because he's an extra kind of God. If you don't believe me, then ask King David. David didn't say he filled my cup. David said he gave me something extra. My cup 
runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. He's an extra kind of God. He's the God of more. He's the God of all you need. He didn't promise he would work some things out. He promised he'd work everything out for your good. You ask him to bless your children. He blessed your children. Then he blessed your husband. Then he blessed your job. He's an extra kind of God. You didn't have enough money to pay that bill, but he sent a blessing your way with a little something extra so that you could pay the bill. Glory to his name. He's an extra kind of God. He sent Moses. He sent Abraham. I Isaac and Jacob. He sent the patriarchs. He sent Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Isaiah. But then he did something extra. We who knew no sin, he became sin. He sent his son. He sent you something extra. He sent you salvation. He sent you forgiveness. He sent you another chance. He sent you peace like a river. He's the God of of the extra and he just keeps on and he keeps on he's the God of something more more than joy more than peace more than strength more than power the doctor did all he could but God healed your body and did something extra that the doctor could not do. Somebody ought to give him some glory in this house. Somebody ought to give him some praise in this house. We're doing the extra because our God is extra. Yes! Yes! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the God of the more than enough. He don't just give you enough. He gives you more than enough. He made the sun to rule by day. And the moon by night. He made the stars just so you could enjoy them. <laughs> just so you could see he's an extra kind of God. Oh, God, have mercy. And the next time you look up and see the stars in the sky, just give him a praise and say, extra. It wasn't enough to send the patriarchs and the prophets. He sent someone extra. He sent his son. He's the God of the extra.